I'm here at the Automobile Driving Museum uh, for their Orphan Car Show uh, here. Uh, they're about to reopen the museum. I believe their grand opening is going to be next week on May 1st. I may come back for it. I don't know yet. But the week before that, they're doing the Orphan Car Meet. So I've got my AMC here. There's a few other guys from the AMC Club. You can see the gremlin behind me. And uh, so we're going to go check out what's here. And uh, oh, yeah, my, my pacer actually passed smog like last week on Monday, and it had no problem passing again. So that's, that's my smog news on the uh, Pacer. Here we go. Right, I'm gonna start with the early cars that got here, uh, such as this Pontiac Fiero. Yes, Pontiac is an orphan car. They haven't made them, uh, I don't know, what, about 10 years, 10, 11 years now. Uh, this guy's got a, a later, or sorry, an earlier uh, Pontiac badge on the front. I know those didn't come like that. Uh, it's got a little bit of your typical 80s uh, GM paint problems. But uh, these are pretty collectible, and uh, there's still a lot of these left. And actually, you can find these for a fairly reasonable price still, uh, if you don't mind not getting a minty one. Uh, and of course, I have my Pacer here. I think I've shown this in so many videos. I'll put a link to the video of the car, which is just the video on the car, uh, in the description. And this is another Mike. This is Mike Lynch's... Uh, Gremlin X with the 304 V8, the five liter V8, which are kind of rare on uh, Gremlins. And he's a member of the uh, SoCal Rambler Club as well. And he goes to a lot of events. In fact, we usually try to park next to each other so people can see the difference. Because I get a lot of comments of, is that a Gremlin? And when you park next to a Gremlin, you don't get that. So it's one less weird question. I still get the, uh, is one door longer than the other questions. But this is actually a really nice car. In fact, he's, I believe he's done some like restoration work on this as well. And this is an original San Fernando Valley car. And here's a Willis Jeepster. There's actually a few of these here. And this was, yeah, it's a Jeep, but it's uh, a Willis Jeepster. So Willis definitely is not in business. Of course, they sold out to American Motors. Uh, and then later on, uh, of course, Chrysler bought out American Motors to get Jeep. So despite the fact it's a Jeep, it's, it actually is an orphan car. Here's a Pinto, but even though that's not really an orphan car, but uh, it's a really nice one. It's had a lot of modifications. It's got, a, got the four cylinder in it with a couple of big carburetors. I'm sure this one's pretty fast. Okay. It's another uh, Willis Jeepster. The uh, flathead in it. And of course, DeLorean. DeLorean's definitely an orphan make. And definitely can't go buy a new uh, DeLorean. And he's got his uh, flux capacitor in there. And speaking of like 80s like icons, uh, the Radwood show is on in, in July in Menlo Park. I believe it's July 11th. So I'm going to try to make it up there and uh, hopefully promote some of the uh, smog uh, bill stuff that's going on in the state of California, as well as shoot a video, perhaps two. And I'm gonna take my kid up and uh, maybe night make a nice little vacation out of it. As we look at this uh, Plymouth Barracuda convertible. Of course, Plymouth is no longer made. Uh, this is a Dodge, which they still make Dodge. It's a nice little uh, dark convertible with the small V8 in it. And, uh, wow, she got this uh, Plymouth Roadrunner. And this one's got the four speed in it. Oh, no, it's automatic on the column. Bench seat. A lot of these were bench seat, 383. I'm going to try to get around these guys. They got their whole South Bay Mopar Club here. They're having a little meeting. Here's a nice, uh, this is a 69 Barracuda. Basically, it's the year before they get expensive. Still a pretty bitching car. It's got automatic with a column. And a modern, uh, modern Hemi in it. Little uh, Studebaker wagon here with the uh, sliding roof. 
This one's got a lot of blue. This one's a Fiat Dino Coupe. For all you Italian car fans. Not necessarily an orphan. And of course, the, uh, this is a 66 uh, Barracuda. Very similar to the uh, 65 Valiant I had last year. Actually, I did a video on the Valiant. Uh, and then a friend of mine said, hey, my wife wants either like a Falcon, a Comet, or a Dart or something. I said, well, I got this Valiant. So he wound up buying the Valiant from me. So that's why there hasn't been any other videos on the Valiant. And the 66 GTO. It's a nice little AMX. This guy actually wasn't in the club, but he's. Uh, we made sure we, we hooked him up with the information for the uh, SoCal Rambler Club. We're on Facebook, don't you know? This guy I talked to him. He said he's owned this car for many years and. I don't know, like 40 years or something like that. I think 35 or 40 years he's owned this car. Another Willis Jeepster. This one's got a lot of later modifications to it. Here's the rest of the uh, 1966 GTO. This one's got the uh, 389 with the uh, three deuces on it. Of course, the uh, Nash Metropolitan, which were actually made in England by Austin. This one's real sharp looking. And a, this is a super rare uh, Rambler Typhoon. I can't remember what the production number on this was, but it was very low. And it's even got the original Temporary dealer, temporary from uh, 1967. Yeah. Uh, as they blow out the speakers for us. Right, I'm gonna try to shoot this stuff before the band comes on because the hello, band hello. is right there, uh, so you, so we don't get any music in the background. But uh, got LA Fire Department with their Hummer, which I guess sort of is an orphan, but they're actually bringing it back as an electric Hummer now and a uh, Model T fire engine from the uh, LA Fire Department Museum. And those guys do a great job because my old shop caught on fire last a couple weeks ago and the LAPD, or sorry, LAFD put that thing out really fast and there wasn't a whole lot of damage to my old scooter shop building, which our family still owns. Let's talk about this guy, it's a 63 AMC. And this was on one of the uh, TV shows, I'm not sure which one. Where they, where they redo cars. It's got a 350 crate motor in it, 700 R4 transmission, completely custom suspension, disc brakes, everything. So, and then of course they left the original patina. This is a really sharp car. Like I said, it doesn't look like it, but there's a lot of work in this car. It's an old uh, Plymouth coupe, done up like a traditional hot rod. It was like 30s. This one is a 34 Plymouth. But you don't see a lot of Plymouths being done, mostly Fords in that era. But it's very cool. It's a little Bonneville. It's a 67, uh, sorry, 63 Bonneville. Pontiac. Another GTO. I think this one's also 66. This one's got the his and hers shifter on the console there. Yeah, it's a 66. A little Avanti. This is like the more modern Avanti, not, not the original 60s one. So this is probably somewhere in the 80s or 90s. Uh, they, they just kept building Avantis. Somebody this was a 74, sorry. Um, as the years went on, they got more and more weird, though. But uh, 
This is one of the better looking ones, I suppose, but by then they'd gotten rid of the chrome bumpers and tried to modernize it a bit, which probably wasn't, in my opinion, wasn't, probably wasn't the best idea, but uh, still an interesting piece of automobile history, though it's not one of the original Studebaker Avantis. I'm gonna come over here. Here's Hudson. This one's like pre, this one's a Hudson Pacemaker, 1952, so it's not the Hornet. It's got the little, little clip-on mirrors. And an Austin Healey 3000. My uncle had one of these, the same color, it got stolen many years ago. And it got recovered, and then he sold it to the guy who... The police detective that actually found it wanted to buy it, so he wound up selling it to him. That was many years ago. This is like, here we go, it's like a Ferrari, uh, it was like a 308 or something. So this Mira, I don't know what this is, but it's like a Ferrari 308, but it says Mira on it. So if anybody knows what that is, Oh, it's like a, I think it's a Fiero kit car or something. So it's 88, oh, Pontiac, so yeah, it's a Fiero kit car, so I couldn't figure it out. That's why it was kind of throwing me off, but it had the Pontiac Fiero interior. There, uh, 67 GTO. This one's also got the his and hers in it. Ooh, the 8 track. So. So it's like a, it's like a Lotus 7. Maybe it's either one of the Caterhams or if it's a Lotus. Might be an original Lotus. Of course, you can still buy these as a kit car. But this looks to be, might be an original Lotus. It's a cool 74 AMX. This is when they had the full javelin uh, body on it with the back seat. The earlier AMXs were like a javelin but shorter with, uh, with only the, the front two seats. Probably one of the more interesting muscle cars of that era. There's a 95 uh, Pontiac Firebird. This is the Firehawk, so it's got the uh, Ram Air hood on it. Another Firebird uh, Firehawk. It's a later one, but it's convertible. With a six speed. Some more British cars for you. Some Austin Healey Sprite. Another Healey. So another Lotus 7. There, Austin Healey. This one's the Jensen Interceptor. I'm not sure if this is the one with the Chrysler engine in it. Yeah, so it says it has the Chrysler 440 in it. There's an old Packard. I think it's a 56. I believe it's got the plastic on the original upholstery and it's got the little pod coming off of the uh, steering column there with a push button shift. This one's a patrician. This is an Opal Cadet station wagon. I used to have an Opal Cadet, but the uh, fastback. 
I believe mine was a 68. So it's German General Motors. You can't park it. Okay, why? Because they still make Yeah, but they don't make the 912. This one says it's a 67. Yeah, mine was a 68, I believe. This one's a Jensen Healy Roadster. And there's actually a Hudson Hornet over there, but someone's photographing it, so I'm not going to bother them or the car. Now we got a couple latecomers. We got a uh, Studebaker, Gran Turismo Hawk, and a Ram for Marlin. Check that out. A couple guys coming in late. So this event is here at the Automobile Driving Museum in El Segundo. And if you've never been in there, they've got a really nice selection of cars. And they usually can take you out. They have different days where they'll take you out in the car. But of course, I don't think they're going to do that because of COVID. Um, the museum is, is, their grand opening is next week. They will let you walk through it. Um, but they're blasting copyrighted music. So I'm not going to walk through there right now. Um, unless I go in later and they happen to have the mu music turned off, I'll, I'll go ahead and shoot it. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff. So if you're in El Segundo, it's actually near LAX. So like if you have like a layover where they stick you in a hotel overnight or something at LAX, uh, you might want to go check it out. It's like literally minutes from the airport. Okay, not really a orphan car, but it's a nice little Fiat 124 uh, Roadster. Of course, Fiat is still in business. And a little Fiat uh, Bianchina. I've seen this car. This is actually in one of my van videos, I believe. And it's got uh, Volkswagen power in it. I'm gonna show you the sedan delivery. That's the band playing. It's US 99. And like I said, the drummer was actually my teacher in junior high, so. There's a bit of a connection there. Chevy sedan delivery. The events here are kind of cool because people can kind of come and go. You're not necessarily like held back here. Nice little uh, beetle. And they were trying to get the guys with the non-orphan mates to park outside, including this pretty Buick. Chevy Blazer. And another Beetle. This one looks to be kind of chopped. All right, so I took a break, uh, went and got some lunch. So now I'm going to show you some of the cars that rolled in here uh, since I shot the, the earlier part of the video. Here's that uh, Studebaker uh, GT Hawk. So it's got the uh, original engine, but with a uh, modern Edelbrock carburetor on it. You've got a uh, Nixon California sticker on the back window. So, and I'll show you the uh, Rambler. the Rambler Marlin. These are very similar to like the uh, Plymouth Barracuda, but this is the American Motors version. And it's like a pretty well preserved original car. And now for something completely different, how about a Plymouth Reliant K car from the uh, 1980s? These were the cars that saved Mopar back then, if you can believe it. As you can imagine, there's not many of these left. Most of these have gone to the uh, great scrapyard in the, in the, in the sky, but uh, this one is still chugging along, dents and dings and all. 
and even a club. This is the heavy metal handyman. This guy's actually a van guy. He's got a couple like Dodge A100s as well. Uh, and he has this uh, cool gremlin. He's been to, I think, a couple of the uh, Rambler Club meets with this. And it's got the uh, very 70s uh, mag wheels. All right, so that's about going to do it here at the uh, Orphan Car Show at the Automobile Driving Museum. I'm going to try to shoot some more automobile events uh, pretty soon, uh, see what's coming up. I might come back next week. Uh, next week on Saturday, May 1st, is their grand reopening of the museum. All uh, So if you like what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment as to what your favorite Orphan Car was in the video. And until next time, I'll be seeing you.